trade for Jimmy Butler. The Twitter sphere was on pins and needles last night, especially after Celtic star Isaiah Thomas tweeted this, hitting us with the subliminals, the eyeballs. So that got Twitter even more riled up since Thomas previously tweeted the eyeball emoji right before the Celtics acquired Al Horford. So the chatter led to Celtics assistant GM to reply with this. Life in 2017, a player randomly tweets eyeballs emoji and roughly 20 reporters instantly text or call you demanding to know when the trade is happening. Laugh out loud. Yes, this is the world we are living in. Max Kellerman, do the Celtics need to get Butler? If the price is right, they'd be foolish not to, I think. Um, and the price is right means I wouldn't include Crowder in a deal who I like a lot defensively especially, his versatility, multiple positions, able to switch, all these kind of things that you want from that Swiss Army knife style, you know, can do whatever you need him to do, wing slash power forward nowadays uh, type player. I like Crowder a lot. I wouldn't uh, include him. Celtics have a bunch of draft picks. Maybe you don't give him your best one, but if you're talking about a first-round pick, a reasonable something, Avery Bradley, some other stuff, something like that, you'd have to say yes. I wonder if the Boogie Cousins deal didn't, depress the trade market to the to, in the sense that maybe you don't have to give up quite as much to get a player who people know really isn't happy where they are. Um, maybe not. If the price is right, Butler to the Celtics really makes them, you know, all of a sudden you got to look at the Cavs a little more closely. Still you like the Cavs to come out of the East because they have by far the best player in the world, plus another great player who's also great in crunch time in Kyrie, plus they've done it before and they've gone to the finals and they're a cohesive unit. They're getting J.R. Smith back soon. Like all that stuff, yes, you still like the Cavs. But if you feel like the Cavs may be a little closer to where the Lakers were in 04, heading into that Detroit series, like maybe there is a little bit of weakness there. Maybe there's a little, there are some cracks there then the Celtics add Jimmy Butler without taking away a guy like Crowder. They take away an injured player like Bradley. All of a sudden you go, yeah, the Cavs should still win, but whoa, you got to watch Boston. Were I they, I would pull the trigger on that deal, obviously, if the price were right. I disagree. I don't think they need Jimmy Butler, and I got a lot of love for Jimmy Butler. I think he's a rising star in this game and, and worthy of being an all-star. But I don't think that this is the ideal fit because the Boston Celtics are already 37 and 20. They're 37 and 20 with Avery Bradley already having missed 21 games this year. When I look at it from that perspective, I think a guy like Carmelo Anthony, Boston was third on his list behind Cleveland and the Clippers as his preferential destination. I think that's the kind of guy that you need. You need somebody that you can give the ball to and say, take me there when times get rough and everything breaks down. That's what I view it. And considering the fact that Isaiah Thomas, an MVP candidate, is your leading threat in the fourth quarter, having him and Melo as offensive individuals on the floor, I think is more potent. I think Melo's jump shot is more reliable than, uh, than a Jimmy Butler. As much as I like Jimmy Butler and as big as he is, he's a little bit smaller than Melo. He's a guard. And I think when you look at a Smart or you look at a Crowder or you look at an Avery Bradley even, I think Butler is more of the same ilk. I think Melo brings a different dimension because he's a bona fide small forward who can also play the four for you, who can score from inside or out. And with the requisite parts that Brad Stevens and Danny Ainge would have around them, I would find that part more attractive. I think with Jimmy Butler, it gives you more of the same of what you already have in Boston, which isn't bad at all. Jimmy Butler, you ain't going to take a step back because of Jimmy Butler. But in terms of that leap forward, I don't think he's that guy in this particular scenario. I think that would be more so mellow. With Jimmy Butler, it's more of the same, and I don't think you jeopardize that by making that move. If I'm the Boston Celtics, I, I would I, stand pat before doing that. I really disagree with that. Um, Carmelo Anthony, ISO scorer, um, has been accused, not without cause in recent years especially, of stopping the ball. Not a defender at any position. Probably his best position actually is the four. Getting up there in age, uh, Jimmy Butler in his physical prime, relatively healthy, a two-way player, a real defender. You're right, not much of a shooter, but usually shoots well enough. And in terms of the Celtics' formula for success, they've been successful, you're right, with a lot of guard play, but Jimmy Butler would be the best guy who's not a point guard on the team. In terms of, I know you like very much Carmelo Anthony, Stephen A., because you bring it up a lot when we talk about trades involving Carmelo, what he brings to the table, when everything breaks down. 
But they already have that guy in Isaiah Thomas. He's the best fourth quarter scorer now, in the NBA, which is one of the leading things on his resume that says maybe he actually is in the MVP conversation. You've brought that up, as have I. They already have that guy. I don't know that you need another guy like that who in turn sacrifices defense because he simply can't play it very well versus a guy like Butler who not only improves your offense at the two, but also your defense to go with a guy like Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, who's a very small guy, kind of needs that help the way Steph needs that help in Golden State and gets it from Clay and Draymond and Iguodala and now Kevin Durant. I think Isaiah Thomas also needs that help from Crowder, and it would be nice if the offensive piece they brought in could also do it on the defensive end like Jimmy Butler. That's not Carmelo Anthony. I'm not relying on a 5-9 guard come playoff time when there are seven game series upon which you get to plan to go up against him because he's miniature at that time. The game gets slower. It's more physical. And as a result, that, 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 that height disadvantage usually will come into play. I look at Melo because he's bigger than Jimmy Butler. I also look at him because things usually break down when they get to plan for you over a seven-game series. I also look at Melo because I get tired of people underestimating what kind of a player he can be if he has confidence in the players around him. When he's been in New York, he's been with relative scrubs for the most part. When you look at the year that they went to the Eastern Conference semifinals, if they didn't run into a bigger, more physical Indiana Pacers team, I believe they would have gone to the conference finals. Back then, even though Jason Kidd had a horrific postseason and then he ended up retiring and becoming a coach, for crying out loud, it's one of those situations where you have point guard leadership, I think Melo is a better player. So when you look at Jimmy Butler, again, you're getting more of the same. In Boston, what's your biggest need? What are the things you were in searching for? It was a front-line player. Whether it's somebody at the five or the four, even potentially the three, you needed somebody to put on your front line that could put up buckets, particularly when crunch time arrives. Even though you're getting it from Isaiah Thomas, you can't rely on a miniature 5'9 dude to deliver that for you by himself come fourth quarters you're in the playoffs. You just can't do that. There's too much to ask for him. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I think this comes down to a philosophical debate that you and I continually have on this show in terms of what you need in the NBA. You talk about crunch time when it breaks down, and I would prefer to have a machine where you don't need to worry about it breaking down as much. You don't need to rely on ISO ball. Now, I say that, Stephen A., recognizing that you do need a couple guys like that on the team, ideally at least one in your starting rotation and one guy on your bench, a guy who can get his own shot and beat you even if nothing else is working. That is important to have. But I wouldn't make that a priority over just having a good two-way player who fits with what you're doing better. But obviously, as time goes on this season, this is an argument that we will continue to have. But right now, we got to agree to disagree, gentlemen. So we heard from the fellows. Now we want to hear from our first take fam. We asked you guys at home to weigh in. Who should the Celtics acquire? The results are in. Interesting here. 51% saying Butler, 26% Blake, and 23% Carmelo. After a disappointing season, Jim Ursay believes the Colts are heading in the right direction, but someone at the desk isn't buying it. That's next. Trade for Jimmy Butler. The Twitter sphere was on pins and needles last night, especially after Celtics star Isaiah Thomas tweeted this, hitting us with the subliminals, the eyeballs. So that got Twitter even more riled up since Thomas previously tweeted the eyeball emoji right before the Celtics acquired Al Horford. So the chatter led to Celtics assistant GM to reply with this. Life in 2017. A player randomly tweets eyeballs emoji and roughly 20 reporters instantly text or call you demanding to know when the trade is happening. Laugh out loud. Yes, this is the world we are living in. Max Kellerman, do the Celtics need to get Butler? If the price is right, they'd be foolish not to, I think. Um, and the price is right means I wouldn't include Crowder in a deal who I like a lot defensively especially his versatility multiple positions able to switch all these kind of things that you want from that swiss army knife style you know can do whatever you need him to do wing slash power forward nowadays 
uh, type player. I like Crowder a lot. I wouldn't uh, include him. Celtics have a bunch of draft picks. Maybe you don't give them your best one. But if you're talking about a first round pick, a reasonable something, Avery Bradley, some other stuff, something like that, you'd have to say yes. I wonder if the Boogie Cousins deal didn't depress the trade market to the to, in the sense that maybe you don't have to give up quite as much to get a player who people know really isn't happy where they are. Um, maybe not. If the price is right, Butler to the Celtics really makes them, you know, all of a sudden you got to look at the Cavs a little more closely. Still, you like the Cavs to come out of the East because they have by far the best player in the world, plus another great player who's also great in crunch time in Kyrie, plus they've done it before and they've gone to the finals and they're a cohesive unit. They're getting J.R. Smith back soon. Like, all that stuff, yes, you still like the Cavs. But if you feel like the Cavs may be a little closer to where the Lakers were in 04, heading into that Detroit series, like, maybe there is a little bit of weakness there maybe there's a little there are some cracks there then the celtics add jimmy butler without taking away a guy like crowder they take away an injured player like bradley all of a sudden you go yeah the Cavs should still win but whoa you gotta watch boston were i they i would pull the trigger on that deal obviously if the price were right i disagree i don't think they need jimmy butler and i got a lot of love for jimmy butler i think he's a rising star in this game and worthy of being an all-star. But I don't think that this